Detective stories have come a long way since Sherlock Holmes first hit the Victorian press, and now, with the advent of cinema, those sneaky sleuths have found new life. Whether you're a chain-smoking P.I. in a black and white noir, or a rule-breaking Dirty Harry trying to bring in the bad guy at any cost, there is a genre or subgenre of detective movies for you. That's why today, we're going to go through the lineup of usual suspects to pin down the top 10 detective movies of all time. They're already coming out. Okay, we're gonna have to take them in a the car. Wait till they are all in. Get clean shots, watch your background. Number 10, The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. Hey. Who do you think you are? I'm the guy you know better than my closest friends do. A movie so good, they made it twice. Based on the popular crime series book by Stieg Larsson, the first movie adaptation hit the cinemas in 2009, but our 10th place goes to the David Fincher adaptation from 2011. Fincher was the perfect director to handle the story of a disgraced journalist who teams up with a computer hacker to solve a 40-year-old missing persons case. Filled with twists, turns, and that broody, dark atmosphere which Fincher is known for, The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo is a staple whodunit that any film buff needs to watch. Though there has only been one English language version to date, the original movie adaptation saw live screen versions of the next entries in the book series. What kind of research? Elizabeth. Oh, can I call you Elizabeth? I want you to help me catch a killer of women. Number 9, Fargo. And I tell you what, from his footprint he looks like a big fella. When it comes to funny detective movies, you can either go silly with Pink Panther, or you can get dark and dramatic with Fargo. The Coen brothers were starting to make a name for themselves in Hollywood with hits like Blood Simple and Raising Arizona, but it took this oddball detective story in 1996 to propel them into the cinema darlings we know and love. Set against the snowy backdrop of small-town Minnesota, Fargo follows the snowballing of one buffoon's flawed plan to keep his own wife for ransom. William H. Macy was robbed of an Oscar for his role, whereas Steve Buscemi is an absolute joy to watch as the sidelined criminal losing his patience in this nowhere town. Shut the fuck up, or I'll throw you back into the trunk, you know? But the real star of the show is Frances McDormand, who was crowned Best Actress at the Oscars when she showed the world her take of Marge Gunderson, the pregnant police detective who takes on the case. Darkly funny, tragically broody, and with an iconic accent, Fargo proved that you don't need a rain-slick cityscape to do noir. You were having sex with a little fella then? Uh-huh. Is there anything else you can tell me about him? No. Like I say, he was funny looking. Number 8, L.A. Confidential. Hey! Back, 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 back! Oh, get off me! Against the wall! Against the wall! Against the wall. If you're going to do noir, then do it right. L.A. Confidential takes all those crime-solving tropes that we love so much and demonstrates why we loved them in the first place. Based on James Elroy's novel of the same name, the movie follows the intersection of police corruption and celebrity as LAPD cops, each with different approaches to crime fighting, investigate a string of murders in sunny Los Angeles. We're talking no good dames, down and out cops, a seedy sunset strip, and some killer set pieces. They really don't make movies like this anymore. You're a known associate of a woman killed in a mass murder. Number seven, Prisoners. Why was the RV parked outside the house? We just saw LA Confidential lay it out big and bold with detective tropes, but Prisoners shows there's power in the subtle slow burn. Heralded by Denis Villeneuve, who later became more widely known for his sci-fi entries like Arrival and Dune, this human story about a missing child cranks up the suspense by splitting the narrative into two human stories. There's no way that someone with the IQ of a 10-year-old could abduct two girls in broad daylight and then somehow make them disappear. On one hand, we have Jake Gyllenhaal's police detective, whose methodical investigation slowly but surely solves the twisting mystery. On the other hand, we see Hugh Jackman, whose hasty vigilantism to rescue his daughter threatens to undermine the entire case. Bit by bit, we see these two men change as the weight of the investigation breaks them down. But with an ironclad story structure and plenty of surprises, we promise that this slow burn delivers. Do you, do you have children? I don't. Okay. Number six, Chinatown. Perhaps if we met with your father. Uh, there is one question. Of course. Do you accept people of the Jewish persuasion? There couldn't be a list of best detective movies without a shout out to Robert Towns' Jake Giddis, captured in a legendary performance by the legendary Jack Nicholson. We're back in LA for the 70s classic to see private detective Jake Giddis uncover the connection between a fake client and oranges. Yes, that's right, oranges. Without giving too much away, let's just say that this bizarre setup gives way to an unexpected but infamous ending as Jake uncovers stranger and stranger connections during one drought-hit summer in Los Angeles. 
See if you can spot the cameo from director Roman Polanski, but be warned, if you take your eyes off this delightfully dense plot, then you will miss out on this masterpiece. Number 5. Heat Michael Mann's high-octane cat-and-mouse movie pits Al Pacino and Robert De Niro together on screen for the very first time. Pacino plays Lieutenant Hannah, who vows to take down Robert De Niro's Neil McCauley, a seasoned bank robber who wants to retire after one last job. Add Val Kilmer in a supporting role with Ashley Judd and John Voight, and you have a surprisingly star-studded showdown. And speaking of showdowns, the climactic City Street shootout has been cited by many a director as a masterclass in how to direct all-out mayhem. Number 4. Vertigo I must say I... Oh, when she comes down, don't say that I've been here. Oh, but she hasn't been here today. Detective movies are known for their suspense, and Hitchcock has always been seen as a master of it, so it was only a matter of time before Vertigo appeared on this list. Jimmy Stewart teams up once more with the iconic director, this time to bring a convoluted and color-coded crime caper to the cinema screen. Stewart plays a former police detective who is hired to trail a mysterious and possibly disturbed woman. Soon, though, he finds himself becoming obsessed with her, and things get a little, well, strange. I have a theory. I think if I can get used to heights just a little bit at a time. Set in San Francisco, this story involves double crosses, double takes, and double vision, at least when it comes to Stewart's fear of heights. It received mixed reviews on release, but see for yourself why this is heralded as a gem of the crime thriller. Number 3. Memento Maybe even lovers. This noir genre has well-defined archetypes with clear conventions and typical plots. Then, along came Christopher Nolan's first studio-backed debut, Memento, to blow the lid off. Guy Pearce plays the main character, a man who has lost his short-term memory following a fight with a home intruder. Now he is on the hunt for his wife's rapist and killer, but must rely on an ingenious system of notes, Polaroids, and tattoos to figure out who he can trust. I found you, you fuck. The film employs two timelines which coalesce into a stunning finale that you'll never see coming. And why would you? The protagonist can't even remember what just happened. This movie was doing Inception-style mystery before Nolan made, well, Inception. So, if you're looking for one of the most original takes on a classic genre, then don't forget to add this to your watch list. Number 2. The Silence of the Lambs It's hard to imagine a time when modern-day villains weren't highbrow geniuses with sophisticated tastes in opera and literature, but once Anthony Hopkins starred as cinema's favorite cannibal serial killer, then there was no going back. Jodie Foster plays the role of Clarice Starling, a young FBI agent tasked with catching Buffalo Bill, a nasty piece of work whose false belief in his own transgenderism fuels his desire to construct a suit made from the flesh of his female victims. To crack the case, she must understand the mind of the killer, so she forms a mentor relationship with the incarcerated Hannibal Lecter. Well, Frederica used to work for Mrs. Lipman. Did you know her? Oh, wait. Was she a great big fat person? Make no mistake, this is an absolute masterpiece in serial killer thrillers that is fronted by some absolutely incredible performances. Upon release, the movie was a box office success, critical hit, and even won five Oscars, including Best Picture. Hopkins would receive the Oscar for Best Actor, which is especially impressive given he only appears on screen for about 10 minutes. He's making himself a woman's suit, Mr. Crawford, out of real women. And he, and he can sew this guy. He's, he's very skilled. Our number one pick is Seven. This was found behind the same refrigerator, written in Greece. There are seven deadly sins, Captain. If there's one film that proves how to blend modern-day aesthetics with tried-and-tested neo-noir conventions, it's David Fincher's seminal Seven. It's a star-studded vehicle featuring Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman as city cops who partner up to track down a unique serial killer. Gwyneth Paltrow appears as Pitt's wife, and the bad guy is played by none other than, well, if I told you, it would spoil the movie. The mentorship rivalry between the fronting duo creates an electric tension, while their blossoming friendship gives this shady, sometimes downright sick, detective flick a warm heart. The story revolves around a serial killer who slays his victims using the theme of the seven deadly sins – sloth, wrath, lust, and so on. 
We have no reason to be here. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. Get up. Get the fuck off me. All right. All right. I'm sorry. You can imagine how this creates some downright nasty crime scenes, but this film also has plenty of adrenaline to go with the unraveling of the plot. There are rain slick chases through bustling city streets, riddles where the killer is just one step ahead, and a finale that, for many, marks the quintessential twist ending that many a detective flick struggles to live up to. So what do you think? Did we leave something out, or is there a movie that shouldn't even be on this list? Be sure to let your thoughts be known in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit the subscription button as we'll be back soon with another killer list.